Hello, so welcome to a new reading vlog. I decided to start this vlog in my car uh, before I go out and do my errands. And then I parked next to a construction zone. So there's all these men down there. I don't want them to look this way. Anyway, what's going on? Reading. So the main physical book that I'm going to be trying to read this week is Jaren by Kate Elliott. Talked about this one a lot. I think I've had it floating around for a long time. So I initially read the third book in this series back when I was... 20 something early 20s and at the time I really liked it and I wanted to continue it I didn't even realize I was reading the third book in the series it was very hard to get my hands especially back then on this first book but I eventually did and now like honestly I think I bought this about 10 years ago but still so I'm finally gonna read it my understanding of it actually I read a chapter last night so there is like an intergalactic empire uh there was the human empire and then we kind of butted up against this other alien species which are kind of more powerful than us and so now we're a part of their empire uh and the manga we're following is like the sister of this rebel leader who tried to lead a rebellion against these aliens and he failed but he's still in quite a powerful position within this intergalactic empire however i think most of the story is not going to be set in the intergalactic empire uh, because our main girl is kind of running away from some personal drama she's got and as a result has ended up on this particular planet where the culture is much more primitive i think like i don't know i don't i don't know anything about history but like they're still on horses and living off the land they don't have any technology they're not even aware that there's this intergalactic empire out there that has like a base on this planet studying them and it seems like she has stumbled across some conspiracy with the aliens using this planet and like illegally accessing this planet all i know is there's going to be a romance by the third book so uh that's not usually my favorite these days but i liked it back in my 20s so we'll see how i go with this one i'm not far into it so yeah we'll see the other things that i'm reading this week so i have an audiobook i'm listening to the audiobook of An Unkindness of Magicians. This is a reread for me because the sequel is coming out at the end of the month and I want to read it. An Unkindness of Magicians is about uh, this world where it's just our world, but there's a secret magician society going on behind things. Uh, they call it the Unseen World. Uh, and it's just been announced that there's going to be this new, I forget what they call it, even though I was just listening to it, like a tournament where they're going to decide the new ruling house of this unseen world and so the houses at the moment are picking their champions uh, and there's a few characters i actually thought it was just sydney but i am remembering now there's a few characters who want to change the way that the power structures within this world work uh one thing i will say i'm not very far into it but i am struggling with the number of characters and i think i remember that was my experience on the first read as well which is probably why i've forgotten half these characters so I'm going to try and pay attention and work out who all the characters are and then maybe I'll really uh, enjoy all the different plots that are going to be going on. I do also have another audiobook, uh, A River Enchanted by Rebecca Ross. I don't really know anything about it, but I needed another audiobook, so I've got that. And then as well, I do have another physical book floating around, but I think it's very optimistic to think that I'll get through this. So I think I'm fooling myself that I'll even get to that. So let's not talk about it. Uh, right now I am in an area I don't often come to because I need to get my driver's license renewed. I feel like I look really tired, which is not uh, a good sign for my new driver's license photo. Um, we only get them renewed here like every 10 years or something. Uh, so my last two photos were terrible this one will probably be terrible too it's just the way it goes i guess uh, as well i'm always really paranoid because the first time i went to renew my license i almost failed the eyesight test because it was like doing this weird thing where i would look at it it would be in focus and then it would like defocus and that's so weird that i i know at the time i needed glasses and i didn't have them and since then i do have contacts but i'm still always really paranoid that it's going to do that thing where it was in focus and then it'll go unfocused anyway i'm stressing out about getting my driver's license renewed but i'm sure it will be fine and hopefully in my next update we can laugh at me stressing about it Sunday mornings hiding under covers I don't mind staying in with you play your favorite movie laying right beside me I don't mind when it's just us two that corner coffee shop we like to go late night walk
walks with you to take me home with you i never feel alone these little songs make me glad to call you mine and you have got my head so my stress about the eye test was totally justified because I had problems again. Um, the lady said, look in the thing, look in the box, read the third row. I read the third row. She says, there's three columns. I can only see two columns. So she says, let's, let's try another machine. I look in the next machine. There's two columns, but then I kind of see three and like sometimes there's three, but the letters are all like uncertain about which letter they want to be. <laughs> I finally managed to do it but it took ages. I did look up afterwards and apparently these little boxes that they use for testing people's eyesight are essentially like an optical illusion to make it seem like it's further away and it's very dependent on like your pupil width or something and like a not insignificant number of people can't actually do it. So next time I'm going to go to the optometrist and like get a certificate before I go so I don't have to do those boxes anymore because I just, I hate them. It's so stressful to like be able to see fine and not be able to just look in the box and read the line of letters. Like I saw this girl go before me and she just read it out. <sighs> if only it would work like that for me. But it, it's not my, it, it's not my eyes. Anyway, very stressful. <sighs> so we have to wait 10 working days to get the new photo and see what the new ID is like, but I'm sure I look stressed and unhappy. So what fun. Uh, and then as well as school holidays at the moment. So I tried to like go a little bit of shopping and go to the beach, but there were so many people. Ugh. So anyway, let me update you on my reading. I have managed to read 146 pages of Jaren. It's much less than I would want to have gotten through so far since I'm wanting to read this this week. And to be honest, it's already Thursday. Was it Tuesday when I first updated you? Yes, time keeps passing. Uh, and I just, anyway, this, I just find with Kate Elliott's writing, and this is her debut, I think, so it, it's especially bad. That sounds mean, but I just think sometimes Kate Elliott especially in this, doesn't really describe what's happening properly. Or well, maybe I'm just dumb, but I just feel like a lot of times things are being said with the assumption that you understand something, but I don't feel like that something has ever been explained. As well, this is really just focused on her like integrating into this primitive society and like getting to know all the people. Uh, whereas I think the conspiracy with these aliens and whatever they're up to on the planet is more interesting, but that's such a small part of what's actually happening. So like, I'm a little bit frustrated with the pacing, but I think it's because as well, I'm trying to get through all of this in a week and it's probably more the kind of book that you just need to like sit with and enjoy spending time with these different characters and like dancing and learning to hunt and learning to ride horses, all that kind of stuff. But I guess once she's integrated into the society a little bit more that maybe it'll get more action-y, maybe? I don't know. Anyway, I will try to read a decent amount of this today as well. What else am I reading? Oh, and Unkindness and Magicians. So I think I'm about 60% of the way through this audiobook. I'm really loving it. It's really interesting because it's kind of, there's a murder mystery thing going on, but it's not really a mystery because as the reader, you know who's responsible right from the start. Uh, and it's the same with all the plotting that's going on around this tournament. Like, you know all the different characters' plots, mostly, and it's just seeing how all those plots are, like, coming up against each other to cause disasters. Uh, there is also a bit of a mystery around what's happening with magic, and again, we I, we as a reader don't know everything yet, but we know a lot more than all the individual characters, and it's interesting to see how they're figuring things out. But we don't know everything yet, so I'm not quite sure. I I mean, I've read this before, but I don't remember how things resolve at the end. But I think I just like all the characters. I find them really fun to hang out with. I like how they're struggling with all the difficulties that is going on in this world, and how they're like some of them at least, are trying to do the right thing even though they're being put in situations where that's difficult. Like 
two people who have a relationship were just forced into like a life or death magic duel. So that was fun. Uh, things went wrong. But I guess at the same time, I, I feel like, like it's not at the emotional angst level of, say, uh, Olivier Blake, Atlas Six type, type style. It's maybe a little bit more realistic and our characters are more, like, our characters are older and more emotionally focused. Um, I just got distracted by a fly. Anyway, I'm excited to see how things are going to end. It's actually, I'm only 60% of the way through, but most of the stuff I remember has already happened, so who knows what's going to happen in the last 40% of the book. Uh, but I will definitely be finishing that off today as well uh, when I go for a walk this afternoon, and then maybe I can start in, in my next audiobook. <laughs> Hello, so today we moved my sofas outside to be picked up by the junk guy because they were full of broken springs and honestly they were just trash. I tried to find a new home for them. Nobody wants them, they're awful. So they're outside and now my lounge is like weirdly empty. I do have my guitar amp in here. I need to be doing some more guitar practice and I still of course have my TV and a bunch of other junk that needs sorting out but mostly this lounge is empty. It's like a big empty space. Um, I think since my guitar amp's here, I'll try and make it a band room temporarily. Eventually, Jace is going to bring his couch here, but temporarily, uh, my house is somewhat non-functional, but it's just like the way it works when you're trying to combine houses and also move to a whole new location. Anyway, I wanted to update you on my reading. So, firstly, I've actually been making quite good progress with Jaren. I'm impressed with myself. Uh, I'm up to page 373, so I think I've got just over 100 pages to go, and I will try and read this tonight, maybe tomorrow. I don't think I'll get through it all tonight. No, that's optimistic, because I am still finding this like somewhat uh, hard going, hard to get through. It's just that it's actually so focused on the relationships, and I don't care that much about the relationships. In fact, I it's kind of turned into a bit of a, like a fan, I'd say a fantasy romance, except there's no smut. It's all like fade to black sex scenes and like, I don't know, the, the main kind of relationship that's going on is super toxic, like so toxic. And it's kind of trying to frame it in the idea that it's just that this culture is so different, but no, it's just super toxic. I don't care what your culture is, that kind of shit super toxic. So it's not the best and it's not really the story I want, but there is like a story in there that is interesting about what's going on with these aliens that are on this planet and like the whole conspiracy side of things. And there are parts about the culture and about these friendships that she's forming that are interesting, but it's kind of just a bit up and down. But I do think I've kind of got into the swing of like pushing through the bits that are boring me to get to the bits that I'm enjoying. So I think it shouldn't be too hard to continue this. Uh, other things that I have to update you on. Ugh, honestly, when I'm vlogging. Oh, what just happened there? How did I do that? Oh, I can do that with the controls at the back. Honestly, I don't even know how to use my camera. But And also like I'm just really, my arms get so tired of holding up the camera. I have a thing somewhere but it's honestly still not better. I just need some muscles is what I need. Anyway, I did also finish An Unkindness of Magicians. I really loved it. I do think there's parts where like really big significant things happen in the plot and I don't know what it is but something about the way it's written it doesn't feel like those things get enough emphasis or like they kind of slide by if you're not paying enough attention and I think it's just because it's so fast paced, sort of. Uh, it's not maybe the kind of book I'd normally describe as fast paced, but I, I still feel like sometimes some of those big events 
I would have liked it to like linger on those a little bit more, especially the bits. Like there's some very satisfying bits where the bad guys get what they deserve. And I want to link, like really savor the fact that these guys are suffering and they really deserve to suffer. But also like I love the magic. It's kind of like a very abstract kind of magic, but I like the imagery of it and the way that it's described. So then, since I finished Un Unkindness of Magician, I started a new audiobook. I started A River Enchanted. To be honest, I'm about 30% of the way in and it's not everything that I'd hoped. I think I'd heard that it was like quite a strange story about these children on this island going missing and like all these kind of Scottish spirits somehow being involved. And that's accurate. But for me, the writing is not as beautiful as I was led to expect it would be. And it's not like really that strange. For me, it just seems like a very generic fantasy. It's not bad, but it's just like, I don't know. Again, it's very focused on the relationship between this guy, this bard that's come back to the island to help out and this other woman. And I'm much more interested in the story with the spirits and the children going missing. And so every time it focuses on this relationship, I'm like, yeah, but can we deal with the actual problem at hand? So I've been thinking about DNFing it, but I don't know. For now, I'm going to continue the audiobook. But uh, if it doesn't interest me soon, I might have to DNF it and I might not make it to the second book in the series. It's only a duology. So I thought it would be like a quick, easy audiobook to read, get myself a new series completed. But... I'm just not sure it's for me. It's not bad, it's just not what I really like. Anyway, I'm gonna go to bed, actually, because it's late at night, uh, and I will finish Jaren, and then I guess I'll let you know what we decided about A River Enchanted. <laughs> Hello, so I guess it's time to wrap up this vlog because I finished the books. Uh, so firstly, I finished off Jaren. I feel like at the end, it kind of tried to cram in a bunch of plot and I wish that that had been stretched out. I guess the thing is for me, this is such a weird book because it's kind of like a fantasy romance, except it doesn't really have enough romance. Uh, also, there's no like magical elements, so it's more of like, it's actually a sci-fi, but because they're living on this primitive planet and most of it has very little technology involved, it's it's not a sci-fi. Like, I wouldn't sell it as a sci-fi, but really it's a sci-fi. But really it wants to be a fantasy romance, but I'm not sure it has enough of that either. So it's kind of like all these different things, but not really any of them. But for me, the romance is just not the kind of romance I like. It's this kind of thing where she's really headstrong and he's also like this arrogant dick. But like somehow they come to respect each other, even though to be honest, I just think they're really rude to each other all the time. And he is abusive. And at the beginning of this book, she kind of says that the culture in this world was based on the idea that she wanted to have this primitive world where women were in charge. And I don't think she pulled it off because even though supposedly the women are in charge and the men respect women to make the decisions, the men are still out there fighting and starting wars. And as long as men are out there fighting and creating wars that then impact everyone, can you really say the women are in power? If the women can't just say, look, boys, can you stop that shit? So yeah, I, I don't know. Like I didn't, I didn't mind it because there is kind of this whole thing in here about her just making friendships in this new culture and I didn't mind that but I didn't like the romance. I did like the sci-fi mystery. I don't know. It's probably a solid three stars to be honest. Like not amazing but not the worst. I don't know if I could recommend it to anyone though. I, um, I don't know who I would recommend it to. Uh, the other thing that I read was A River Enchanted. I will say I felt like at the end it got a little bit better. There were a few reveals that came to play. There was a lot more focus on these elemental spirits and like the mystery of what was going on with the children rather than the focus on the relationships. The thing is I just don't like books that are focused on the relationships. Uh, so there's kind of two couples in this book. 
to me the, it's weird because this is meant to be an adult series I think and uh, the characters are adults maybe like new adults this is probably a new adult book um, even though that's not a proper age category but the relationships between these couples just felt very young and like they were between people who were very inexperienced which for one of the relationships made a lot of sense even though that relationship went from like nothing to everything in a moment which again maybe is realistic for a young adult that's new to romance but then the other couple is supposed to be at least a man has already been married before so like that relationship just felt weird to me like why is it so uh, like not immature but like the characters are acting like they're very inexperienced with relationships when they shouldn't be so like the relationship bits I think were very young adult whereas the actual story was okay once it got over the relationship bits and into that story so I I have mixed feelings but I think I will continue the duology I guess anyway uh I feel like I'm ending this vlog on not liking books but I need to remember that this week I did also read An Unkindness of Magicians which I really loved so um it wasn't a completely bad week of reading just not everything I might have hoped still good still good An Unkindness of Magicians was worth it oh and also I received my driver's license photo and it's not terrible like of course it's not great it's a driver's license photo but it's not terrible so this week was a win. I'm gonna count it. Let me know what you've been reading and whether you've been enjoying it. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you are doing well and I will see you next time.